Hi, hello everyone, hope you're doing great. Thanks so much for, for joining me. Sorry I'm a little bit late. Um, we'll probably talk about that too, actually, as to why. Um, kind of sad, it's the last, uh, last one of these workshops, but I have a feeling that, uh, that we'll have more. More on that in, well, I'm, I'm sure I'll keep you posted, but I've really enjoyed all the, the interactions we've had throughout the week. Um, all the ideas, um, getting to know all of you, getting to know the, my friends a little bit more. It's been, it's been great. So if you're new to this, welcome. This is the last workshop of the week. We're having a guitar summer camp, virtual summer camp here, completely free. Everything's free. And I'm um, just doing that because, uh, because I love guitar and I love learning. And I love learning with you guys. So that's, that's where we're doing that. Um, also, really quick, thank you for all of you who have purchased the bundle. Um, there's a special bundle going on this week throughout the workshop. This bundle is made of several courses, several additional workshops, and offered at a massive discount, $37 instead of 167, something like that. And um, you get lifetime access to that. And basically the, the cost, the $37, uh, helps me offset the cost of running these because yes, they do cost uh, money. <laughs> um, I'm doing that for free and my time's free, but all the other instructors on that I have this week, I paid them and um, if you wanna help out, <laughs> you can do so. The link's below. But anyways, I'm so glad you're here. Today, um, today we're gonna talk about uh, that topic that apparently offended someone. Uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> I know he's joking, but um, why is it rude? Why, what's, uh, what's the rudeness in there? I'd love to know, Ian. <laughs> mostly, mostly. Wait, what did I do? Okay, I did something, I did something. Apparently I probably had a typo in my, in my thing or something, right? Um, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I get it now, I get it now. Yeah, <laughs> no, we are gonna talk about a mindset today. And it's something that has affected me quite a bit in my playing throughout the years and I know for a fact that it's affected uh, pretty much every guitar player I know and I don't want that to I want I want all of us to have tools to equip us to just find more joy in our playing and kind of I guess have somewhat of a reset um that's bothering me you see that that reflection on the guitar no that's not acceptable <laughs> Today's episode is getting rid of OCD with David Wallman. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about um, about the mindset today. Um, just kind of helping all of us have a maybe healthier approach to music, uh, more thankfulness in what we do, um, whether whether you guys are making a living out of this or not. Uh, it doesn't matter, but anytime we pick up a guitar, I found that it's very helpful um, in many ways for our mind, for our improvement on the guitar, for everything to just be um, approaching this with joy and appreciation. I'll start with a little story really quick, okay? And then we'll get into how, how does that work on the instrument? The story is this. I picked up the guitar when I was 15, probably like most of us, and uh, picked it up out of just just joy for music, the bands I used to love. I used to love, um, you know, things like Metallica, Guns N' Roses, and um, those bands. Um, and I, I just love the sound of the guitar, so that's why I picked it up, learned some songs. It was really joyful experience, and there was nothing but um, childish discovery and the joy of discovering something, just like a kid gets something new and just a lot of joy in it. And then I started taking lessons because I wanted to get a little better and uh, one thing led to another, then I got into a different way of practicing. It was no longer playing the guitar, but it was practicing the guitar. And that's, you know, all the learning three number string system as a metal player back then, that's what I did. And then discovering um, a little bit of theory, um, discovering all those things, right? And um, Eventually, I'm not sure how it happened, it was very gradual, 
but guitar was no longer, it was still fun, but not the same kind of fun. I found pleasure and fun into really going deep into the playing and the techniques and things like that. And um, I was still enjoying it, but it was very different. And I was, and then, and then in my 20s, um, I met other players and in the circles that I was in, playing in bands and things like that in the south of France where I grew up. Um, I started um, I, I started listening to other players, what they were doing about my age or a little bit older, a little bit younger. And this whole um, thought of, man, he's doing that. I should be able to do that too. Kind of crapped in. Um, kind of the competitiveness of that you can find sometimes in the guitar world. And then um, that was pre-internet. And then um, nowadays... Um, I'm kind of in a different state of mind, but I can't imagine someone picking up the guitar, uh, regardless of the age, and um, now uh, seeing what can be done on the instrument, not just hearing it with records, but seeing it can be very discouraging to some of you. Uh, give me just a minute, sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, all that to say that it can be very discouraging sometimes. One thing that has helped me, there are multiple things that helped me, but one thing that helped me um, that happened, um, oh, back in maybe 2010 or something, I was working for uh, this online guitar company and I had to memorize a song, or I had to teach a song and it was a uh, uh, a Nirvana song, a solo from Nirvana. The the website just, you know, hired guitar instructors and um, and I had to teach a Nirvana song. And I was like, oh come on, like easy. Now I wasn't. I, I love Nirvana, but like okay, great, that's gonna be easy. And it was not easy. And it was not easy because not because it's super technical. But because if I wanted to replicate exactly how Kirk was playing the solo, um, that was nearly impossible. Now, Kirk didn't think about it twice. He probably couldn't play the same exact solo twice. But my approach to guitar was very uh, surgical, very analytic. And I was like, I've got to play exactly that way. Like, this bend is not quite a half step. It's not quite, it's, it's a weird thing. Of course, it was a weird thing because it wasn't played with the same approach that I approached guitar. But... The cool thing with that is that it taught me that there is a whole different way of approaching guitar that doesn't have to be um, athletic in a way. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that is cool. And that helped me transition into finding more joy in playing. So a few things. And I've, I've heard those things happen in some comments uh, before in some uh, private lessons that I did and things like that. It's like, man, like, you're, you make a living out of this. You're, man, I'm never going to play the way you play. And, you know, kind of like putting yourself down because I did that too. Um, please don't do that because I know for a fact that, I mean, all the guys I know that do this for a living are just like you. Exactly. I don't know where you're at. Maybe you do make a living. But if you're the, the guy who, you know, has a full-time job, um, kids, you know, responsibilities, and you pick up the guitar on the weekends and you play for fun, that's awesome. You're, you're, you are exactly in the same boat I am or anyone else. Um, and your, the music that is inside of you is as valuable and as amazing, I think. I truly, truly mean that as the music that is inside of me. It's, there's no competition. I, I think you're great, and I think I'm great sometimes. <laughs> um, but I think we are are. Now, the only thing that makes the difference maybe between one player and the other um, is the ability to bring that music out. But it's not the source of the idea. The source is there. Your ideas are great. You can develop those, but 
The only difference is the amount of time you might spend bringing those ideas out. So um, the secret, I think, of a joyful experience on the instrument is to first of all, um, forget about any kind of like competition, speed or any of that, but just go back to the source and the truth. The truth is, in my opinion, um, music comes from inside or from outside. But regardless, it doesn't come from this. It really doesn't. When it does, when your music comes from this, what it means really, when, it, when you say that uh, there's so many ideas from the guitar, it just means that these ideas are coming from repetitive patterns you've done before. That kind of thing. Um, or licks you've learned. So it's, it's, that's not the creative process. It's just taking pieces here and there that you've worked on and, and piecing them together. And yeah, that looks cool, but uh, is it really you or is it you're repeating stuff that you've worked on many, many times. Um, like a choreograph, choreogra I can't pronounce that word, choreography. Every once in a while, there's words like that. I don't know why they don't stick. Choreography, the French word, choreography, like a dance, moves and stuff. You learn the dance. Are you really doing it well? Yeah, probably, but you are not making anything up. There's no real artistry in it. So that's what I think the joy is to find the artistry and playing the guitar. So how's it done? Many, many ways, but I've talked about it before. My absolute favorite way is to be creative right away um, and to reconnect with the inside of the source. So you'll put the guitar down, you'll just, I always say it because as soon as you have the instrument in your hand, you start thinking like a guitar player. Automatically, you're going to gravitate around the pentatonic, you're going to do a bend, you're going to, even your fingers, they have like a memory built in and they're going to just boop, go on a place that you've played before. So really, literally put the guitar down and then, um, you know, we're going to try this. Give me, give me a second. I'm going to show you literally what I would do, what I have been doing, and I think it's been great. Um, I'm going to take you, you guys on a little, um, a little excur excursion, okay? Um, Give me, a, give me a sec. Now, it's basic, what I'm going to tell you, but it's often so, it's so basic that most people don't do it. And that's a shame. You should do it. If, we're going to put that to the test, if music really does come inside, well, that means that you can create music from anywhere, right? So let's give it a try. See what happens. Sorry, just a second. I promise there's a point to this. I promise there's a point to this. My point is, um, hang on. I know, it's not polite, but there's a point. You guys having fun yet? <laughs> okay, all right, you ready? We're gonna go on and walk. So yeah, if music really comes from inside, we should do, be able to do that from anywhere. And that's what I usually do. So typically before going into my office here, before any kind of playing, um, something happened before. I don't spend my whole life in there. And the best ideas, for me, are from no guitar in the hand. So we're gonna we're gonna take a little walk, okay? You can go outside. So if you live, you no, know, for me it's outside. I love meeting outside to get ideas, just get fresh air and stuff like that. Hopefully the connection is still okay. Um, let me check the chat real quick to make sure that everything's good here. So I'm, I'm no longer thinking of guitar right now. I can't, I mean, I can, but I don't have the physical aspect of the guitar in my hands. I can visualize it, but I'm trying not to. I'm just 
just outside and then now talking to you isn't going to work very well but once I'm outside I'll, I'll usually go on a walk or something and just listen to what's going on around it might take an hour or something but usually I, I try to I try to quiet my mind and uh, eventually I'll, I'll start hearing music in the right state of mind and I'm starting to Doing right now is trying to really listen carefully to that thing inside. It's going to be what's inside of you, right? But okay, so I'm going to try to sing that hummet, but I'm hearing like a, a, some kind of a theme. Usually, it starts with a theme, not a chord, but a theme. Uh, there's a plane here. If I can remember after something distracting, that's a very good sign. You hear birds. I still hear that idea. It's something like da da da, 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 da something like that. Da, 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 da. And typically I'll just kind of like uh have that in the back of my mind on my walk. Da 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 na, 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 na. And I'm making something on the spot on the fly with that idea. No guitar involved. But that's very helpful because it, you recognize within the idea. Da 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 Ma na na ma na da da Okay, I, I think I have the essence of an idea. So I'm gonna go back into the studio because now I have something. Da 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 Na 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 ma la da da See what happens. Get a little tour too. Here's the here's the studio. Da 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 da. Na 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 da da. Something like that. Okay. Back home. Okay. Okay. So you got that. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave again. Just a sec. Da 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 da. Na, 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 na. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my instrument. I have a better idea of what's going on. Da, 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 da. And I'm picturing like um, a shape, a geometric um, line. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. La, ba, da, da. Da, da, ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut off my phone here because there's like a weird echo. Hang on just a second. Okay. Da 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 da. I'm gonna fish around a little bit. La da da da. Okay, here it is. La bam. That's gonna be a little higher. I'll try. Okay. It's not comfortable. It's not a comfortable pattern, which is cool. I'm starting to work on something different. Nah. Yeah. Not very comfortable to play. Maybe I can play it somewhere else. It's, now I'm starting to work on something, but it's exciting because it came from the source. No. I'm starting to explore a little bit, getting a little bit more comfortable with it. I'm expanding a little bit that idea. But the, the point is, 
when I had this original idea, it came from something new, something outside of the guitar. And from there, that kind of put my mind in a conversational storytelling type of playing, which is so much freeing because you discover things about yourself. Um, that's it, <laughs> really. <laughs> now, that's the main thing. I do see some questions here. Um, all right, uh, we'll just do yeah, how it, I, I'm see yelling a lot of questions, so it's not going to be in order. Uh, Max is asking if I live in the States. Yes, I've lived in uh, the United States for um, 18 years, I, and I do live in Colorado right now, but I'm from Aix-en-Provence. Um, you know, there's so many um, things we could talk about from, from here. Uh, Ken, I do still love those bands. Yes, thank you. So oh, that's another thing, you know. I, I thought, um, yeah, here's the thing. This is another thing. Maybe that will help. I, I went to music school back in the early 2000s. And at the time, I played guitar. I, you know, I knew, I knew things. I, I thought I was a good player, but then I learned that it's, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I had some theory lessons, and in my mind, I was really th afraid, generally afraid, that understanding the rules of music would take away my joy of... Um, the magic of listening to some of those bands. And again, back then, for me, it was Guns N' Roses, Iron Maiden. Um, I did love Satriani, I still do. He was kind of like the bridge between more of the metal genre and other stuff. But I was afraid that understanding all those rules would take away my appreciation for some of those bands. And I told my my theory teacher after the first lesson in school, in music school, I said, I, I think I might need to drop out unless you convert, convince me otherwise. But you're talking about all these things like modes and, and keys and all of that. And in my mind, I was like, you know, I, if I understand all that, I'm not going to love those, those bands anymore. And I don't want to be a jazz guy. And I, I want to still have the magic feeling that I get when I'm listening to music. And um, he totally got it because um, he was an older guy, but he understood because he had the same feelings before he got into that. And, um, and he told me, now you're going to appreciate those bands even more. And he's right. So I still love those. Um, just really quick, Mr. Dave, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. You don't, you didn't have to do that, but I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And also, Charles, thank you very much for the super chat. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very, very much. It's good to see you, Charles. Um, okay. Oh, any other questions here? Let's see. So what I do with this, depending on where you're at, once you have a theme, maybe instead of trying to figuring out how to play it, you can get into the, the chord world. Um, da, 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 na, 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 na. Ma, any of these notes, la, la, da, da. you know what, we're going to transpose that into A, because for some reason I sang that in right here, which is uh, an F sharp, but I'm going to do that in G. Okay, any of these notes? This one, this one, this one. Any of these notes are linked together. You can kind of hear that there's a thread, right? It doesn't sound... That's changing keys. You can kind of hear that all these notes don't necessarily fit, but this does. Whether you know the notes, the intervals or not, you kind of feel that it's all part of the same thing, the same scale. Chords are going to be the same. So really what you're doing here, you're giving your ear a clue as to what scale is being used. So let's, let's do this. This is going to happen in my mind, but I'm going to show you 
Um, I'm going to show you visually what, how you can make the bridge between what you're playing, what you're figuring out, and the theory. The theory is really the, the only rule in music that counts, that matters, is that you have two choices. You can either um, play something that most people are going to find enjoyable or play something that most people are not going to find enjoyable. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, it all has to do with matching musical elements together. If you have an element, it could be a chord, a lick, you know, a phrase, like however you want to want to call it. But matching things together would be basically if if these notes were assigned a function like an interval, then the chords should match that. In other words, you don't want to have, say, a major seventh. Um, with a minor seventh. So let's say your theme has a minor seventh. And your chord has a major seventh, then the minor seventh and the major seventh are gonna to clash together, right? This note and this one. Unpleasant. So that's an option. A lot of genres use that clash. Some use a lot of that clash that's playing completely out, some a little bit, like blues. There's always that clash that happens. Between that, and that's why you hear, you know, when someone plays blues. You kind of hear the, you know, going from one to the other. Or matching everything perfectly, and that's going to be the most pleasant for most people. Doesn't mean that it's the choice you should make, but that's... So really, you have two choices in music. So, if you want to use choice one, which is being as pleasant as you can to most people, there's only one rule, match musical elements together. If you, on the other hand, want to sound a little bit tense, a little outside, a little jazzy, or whatever you want to call it, then you don't match musical elements. And then you try to make it work with things like rhythm and things like that. But let's go with the first melodic, uh, I want to please the most people possible, including me, because I think it sounds good. Well, this is what I would do. Um, I'm going to share my screen here um, in a second. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to use Neck Diagrams, the software that I use for, you know, screen sharing and stuff like that. So we have an empty fretboard here, and what I'm going to do is simply take my theme. <laughs> that I have here, and I'm going to write each note. So the first one I had was this one on the fourth string, fifth fret. No, no. That's, that's that one. Right here. So. Okay, that's what I have. That's the information that I gave uh, the scale, and those all these notes are part of what I just played. Each of these notes could be something. It could be a root, it could be something else. We don't know. This note, for example, could be a root. Now, if I call this a one, a root, all the other notes are gonna become something according to that one. They're all gonna be attracted to that root. So if I play just the one, all the other notes are going to be attracted to that. It gives it a flavor. But what if I wanted this note, the second note right here, to be the root? gives it a different flavor. Do you like it? Yes? Do it. No? Don't do it. <laughs> what about this one? An octave low. Now, depending on the root, it's going to have a different flavor. I'm going to consider this the root that's the, the prettiest to me. Um, so I'm going to call this a root. So all the others, see, they automatically took their... Um, their place, according to this, 
So now we have uh, a little more information. We'll have a one, which is the root, which in this case is G, a major second, a major third, a perfect fifth, and a major seventh. Okay, we don't have a fourth. No fourth. Oh, well, it could be this fourth or this one, right? They're both valid options. Same with the sixth. There's no sixth, so it could be, um, sorry, it could be this sixth, which is a major sixth, or it could be this, uh, which is, it's, I know it's, it shows as a, a sharp five, but it's also a, a flat six. So it could be one of those, you know? And because we don't have any indications, uh, it's up to us. So let's take a, you know, the uh, most commonly option would be this. That's a major scale, okay? So we got, sorry. So I can build chords from that scale. Na, da, da, da. Okay, I could do that, um, but I could also do this if I wanted to. I could change that fourth to a sharp four. Could I do that? Well, yeah, because it's not given to me by the theme that I had. In that case, the chords are also gonna change. It would be something like this. different flavor but an acceptable flavor right it's just different um so i'll talk about how to come up with these chords in just a second but really quick can the shop the software i'm using is called neck diagrams i've used it for over a decade it's it's the best it's great it's amazing um and then also can you also had a question about my picks here yeah these are they're they were just on the table. <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're thick, but those are the ones that are on the table. Maybe not the picks that I would use right now, but yeah, they're pretty thick. Those are V picks. Um, but yeah, they just happen to be on the, on the table. Usually I'll use a thinner one. Okay, let's talk, about, um, let's talk about these chords a little bit. How do you come up with uh, the chords that I was, um, that I was using here? Um, it's really a visual thing for me. So I'm going to answer that question, Glenn, right now. So let's consider that this is the scale that we determined we want to use, because that's the cool flavor that we want to bring to that song. So instead of... We want... that the theme fits that too. So what I do, as I'm, uh, as I'm practicing this or a new scale or whatever it is, I try to visualize first one short area of the fretboard. Well, you know what? Before I get into that, let me tell you what most people would do. Most people would take the full scale and harmonize it in thirds. So um, I'm gonna use a built-in feature here, the scale generator. This scale happens to be Lydian, so we're in G Lydian. And it's going to populate all the notes um, on G, on the fretboard for G Lydian right here. Okay, so typically what people would do is build triads. That's how we start understanding chord harmonization by taking, you know, from the first note of the scale, the one, the three, the five, and the seven, and build a chord from that. So this is the arpeggio form. But I, because I can't play two notes on the same string on the guitar, I would try to, you know, figure out a way to use those, those four notes right here, but in a chord shape. And, you know, we, can, we don't have to use the same order of notes. We don't have to one, three, five, seven. We can do one, okay, the three's here. I could do that, but 
this shape right here would be kind of difficult to play, so maybe I'll do this, uh, this, 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 this. That is one shape that's possible to play. That would be a A major seven. If people don't want to use the seventh, that's okay. You don't have to. It's maybe a not as rich of a chord, but you could play a major. So basically they would harmonize it like this, either in triads, one, three, five, or in four notes chords, one, three, five, seven. And they would do that from the first, um, from the first note, from the root, and then take the same exact process, but this time from the second note. So this would be a two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, one. And this right here, if we, harm, if we uh, built a chord on that, we would find that we can build a chord that looks like this, which is a major chord, looks like a major chord, and then we'd have a minor triad here, it, and so forth and so forth. Does that make sense so far? That's the traditional way. I don't like to do that because I feel that it kind of locks you into, into something that is maybe not as interesting as uh, this option. This option is visualizing the fretboard. So here we have the full fretboard, but you don't have to do the full fretboard. If you're just learning a scale, you might start with just the first position. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out some of these notes. Let's say that you're memorizing G Lydian and all you know is this right here, okay? Um, so what I do is you visualize that on your fretboard and then you randomly highlight some notes, like this, this, this. Is that a chord that is extracted from Lydian? Yeah, sure. What is the name? It doesn't matter. Because all that matters is that this sound is part of Lydian. That works, right? Would, uh, I don't know, this work? It should, right? Just adding the bass here because it's a little fuller. Um, what about this? This would work too. And as you are expanding your view of the fretboard, you can build any chord like just this. This is gonna work, right? It's part of it, so it should. Um, that's the same exact shape with two frets below. And so forth. Eventually, you're going to get a taste for some of those chords and you're gonna hear them as you explore this in the back and you're gonna be able to kind of like aim for certain sounds like I was doing there. And so forth. Um, it's a, it's an exploration game. That's that's what I love about get the guitar. It's just exploring, and um, that helps reconnect with the original joy that I had when I picked up the guitar. And you probably had too, just kind of maybe learning songs or allowing yourself to to go there is is really the key thing. All right. Um, And, and, you know, without knowing it, we're starting to work on, on theory, on technique, because some of these are a little different, on musicality, on imagination, on all of those things. And sometimes those ideas can come from just, uh, they, they could be just shape-based. So I love open strings. That's one of the beauty of the guitar. So I would maybe sometimes I would just put my fingers in a shape that you know I don't really know, like okay I don't know what's gonna happen but I'm gonna add some open strings here and and we'll just see we'll just play it. Oh, well 
Most of the time, it's going to sound good. Like, maybe. That has its space. If you find that one is not, a note is not really part of it. Don't like that, just don't play it. Okay, that chord, for example, yeah, it's a little tensed. But maybe it's uh, used to bring something else. Ooh, okay. So usually tensed, you want to resolve it with something you know will work. Like this, for example. Or, I don't know, like just, okay, randomly. Up, like that, like that. I don't know. I don't even look at the fretboard. We'll see. Ooh, okay. What can we do with that? Imagine. Da, da, na, na, na. And then I'm hearing la ba ba ba. Anticipate the sound of the next one. Sometimes when I find a scale that I kind of like, I'll try to combine some notes from it. to it what I played before. That kind of thing. So it's, um, that was, I, I enjoyed playing it and that brought me joy and mission, mission accomplished. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe it's not that at all. Maybe it's not that I, I, I'm playing with joy. Maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> I don't know. It could be. So Dr. Buzz has a good question. What's your thought process on what you just played? Are you thinking in modes and chords from each mode? So no, uh, I'm not. I'm really thinking of, it's not a hundred percent mind. What do I want to play? A little bit sometimes is influenced by finger memory. Like at some point I, I knew that, um, I don't remember what I was playing. I think I had a shape 
there, and I knew that I was in E, and I knew that um, this is something that I've done before. I knew that I wanted that sound, so it was maybe more directed about on um, like a physical direction. Okay, I know that that's gonna be that. But a lot of times, especially when I'm playing here, okay, I'd have two notes. I'm imagining. I missed it, but that's okay. I'm trying to. No. That's the thought process, more imagine what uh, you would want to hear next and try to aim for it. Some tools that I find useful to do that is uh, visualizing not the fretboard, not the shapes, but an imaginary line. If this is your starting note, la, and your what you want to play is la da da, you know that it's going to go up, so that gives you a clue. Okay, na, na, I'm going to go up on the towards the bridge, la da da. Even if I miss, it's gonna be the same direction. Okay, I didn't miss, but even if I did, same kind of direction. I'm not gonna be like that. It, I just imagine the line, la da ba ba ba, for example. And then in my mind, and it happens pretty fast, quick, but if I have the line, na ba 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 ba, so going up, going back down, higher up. And then I'll, I'll be like an investigator. La, ba, ba, ba. Are there any notes that are the same? La, try to remember. La, 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 ooh, la. The fourth note, one, two, three, four. And the first note are the same, therefore the same fret. La, da, da, ba, ba. That's even higher than anything else. La, da, ba, even higher than that. La da da, back to the first note, up to the peak, and then I can kind of imagine la da da ba ba. Oh, I got it. Um, so starting with that, and you'll see that you'll you'll get closer and closer if you start thinking like that, and faster and faster at that process of thinking about these things. Um, yeah. Jorge, um, uh, you have a good question here. Where would a pure beginner start when wanting to play guitar? I, so there's not one way, but I would not start with theory because that's gonna bore you. And the only reason I think someone should study a theory concept is with a good end goal, not just for the sake of it. So a goal might be, oh, I'm writing this song and I'm stuck here. Okay, well maybe let's explore some theory things to apply it. But don't just learn theory, theory for theory. If you're not going to use it, it's useless. I would start learning some songs you like, honestly. It depends what you want to be. Do you want to be a campfire player? Like playing around the campfire, some known songs, and that's awesome. Then learn songs. Do you want to go to the open uh, blues jam nights on Friday nights? Then learn the minor pentatonic scale. And that's not better than the campfire player like not it just depends what you want to do but i would probably start by learning a few songs in the genre that you want that you like that you like because it'll give you a few things it'll get you into the physical aspect of playing the trap we talked about that yesterday in yesterday's session with uh with sam um that's a trap for players where they, they start memorizing things on the fretboard and then they get stuck and trapped into the physical aspect of guitar. And Sam was just talking about that, that sometimes, or a friend of his recommended that he, he stop practicing. And that was great for him because he rediscovered that inner piece that we, we talked about earlier. Um, Uh, Jim, I haven't composed for, f uh, have I composed for a film? Nothing, just for me, for fun. That's all. That's what I've been doing. Um, so, yeah. I see some good friends in the house, which is great. I see Gilles. 
un pote français. Il y a un autre français dans la pièce. Il y a un autre French person. Two. Um, I was going to tell you something super important, and I forgot. So it is probably not that important. Glenn, what a good question. What do you do when people want you to play for them? Um, things have changed quite a bit for me from my approach to music because um, I really do it for myself now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just play for myself. And it's not in a selfish way. It's more for a, a need to recharge way. Um, so I don't. <laughs> But if there's a guitar here and I had to play, I would make up something on the fly because that's where I find my joy. I don't find my joy in playing songs. I find my joy in doing stuff like... <laughs> something. I'd make up something. It's a very non-interesting way to play for others, so I don't. So I don't know. Um, Matt, welcome to the to to what's going on here. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm not playing music, making moods and ambiances or whatever it is. I I guess I don't. It doesn't matter anymore <laughs> to me. Uh, Ken, yeah, I, th I think she does. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if my wife likes my playing. I hope so. I haven't asked her. You know, I think she does, but yeah, she does. Um... play, the more I realize that a lot of it is about the chords. Even, even solo. I tried to run a backing track earlier, but I think the backing track is way too high for this kind of thing. I don't know. Is it, is it, is it way too high in volume? Let me know. Um, Because when I play over track, I would try to fit the chords. Another, uh, Sam talked about that yesterday, actually. Or, no, Nick. Nick Kelly, uh, two days ago. Which you can watch the replay, too. We were talking about uh, playing melodic and that instead of pl uh, figuring out the scale and using the scale as, you know, uh, a um, canvas and just playing the scale over it, think about the chords more. And that's... Um, I think that's the the way to sound like more melodic. So I could play something like this. That could work over a lot of things, right? Could work over this. Could work over... Um, It could work on a lot of things. But if you think about the chords instead of... You hear the chords in the back. Um, so yeah, the importance of chords, I feel, is uh, something that I rediscovered. 
when I when I for, when I started playing, I thought it's either rhythm player or lead player, but it's all blended together. So I recommend you watch Nick's session if you haven't already. The replay is there. Um, uh, new album, no release date, of course, of course, no release date. <laughs> but yeah, there is one that's been in the works for what. Ever since Evolving Seeds of Glory was out, so six, seven years ago, a long time ago. Um, all the songs are written. I'm just recording the rhythm guitars. Maybe I can, let's see if I can have you hear a little piece. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Probably not. Um, I'm, I'm loading it up right now. No, it's not going to work because of my setup. Uh, Tom. How do you approach unlearning bad techniques? Well, the fact that you know that there's a problem is half of the battle, I think. And is it, when you say uh, unlearning bad techniques, the, the difficulty seems to be um, that it's a habit. If probably you you're doing that bad thing whatever it is out of habit so i would really not be afraid of slowing down stuff working on something very very slowly to rebuild the proper way to fixing whatever it is you want to fix but i would say are you sure that it's a bad technique though are you sure because sometimes um you might think it's bad maybe maybe you're okay here's here's a good example the flying um, pinky, you know how a lot of players like they have their pinky super high, right? And there's this thing that you want your pinky really close to the fretboard, really close. Why? Why do you want it close? Well, so that uh, there's less distance to travel. Okay. Um, well, why is it a problem? Well, because if you play super fast, then there's it goes faster there. Okay. So do you do you need to play super fast? Yes, okay, well, let's look at it. No, problem solved. Um, but, yeah, it's true that if you're thinking about playing fast, which I, I don't play fast, I was going to say anymore. I've never played fast. But if you uh, want to fix that, maybe being close is maybe not the most important thing because if you're close, you are changing your position of the, of the, the hand. And maybe that's going to create more problems than not than having your finger a little further away. So there's a lot of things to look at when you're doing that. My finger is far. And maybe it's not that much of a problem. I think a lot of times uh, people th say it's a bad technique, but it's really not. So, but, but I don't know, Tom. Being aware of it is half of the battle, though, I think. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any other questions that I missed. Another thing is rhythm. Such an important aspect of this. Um, especially when you're improvising. So if I'm improvising something like this. Is it too loud? Let me know. I'll stop it right away. I don't know really the key, but I know that I can groove over this. I got lucky.
so forth. Um, sorry, it, the, there's, it's probably way too loud, the thing. But the rhythm, most important thing. Um, let's see. If I play the wrong notes, it's also going to sound kind of coherent. I'm not looking at the fretboard. It doesn't sound awesome, but it sounds better than if the rhythm was bad. And good rhythm and bad note is better than good notes and bad rhythm. Sure. Bad notes, but good rhythm. Sounds a little better. So if you had to choose, I'd say a rhythm. Um, no, good notes and good rhythm. So yeah, importance of rhythm. So all that to say, I guess, if I had to say one thing is, in the end, it's just guitar. It's not that important. It's fun and it's enjoyable and it's a thing that you can do. <laughs> Anyways, don't take it too seriously, I guess. That's the main thing. Any last questions before before um, we wrap this up. So it, the, the link to grab all of the replays in the private community is free. There's a link below. And I'm also adding some backing tracks to go with the session, so you can check those out. Um, there's also a link in the description if you want to grab that bundle. So there's a full workshop with uh, Steve Stein, an hour-long workshop, an hour-long workshop with uh, Sam Bell, hour-long workshop with myself, I added over 250 backing tracks, over 100 licks, um, lifetime access for just $37. That's it. So I'm, the link is in the description of the, the video or if you're watching this in a private community. And basically, that helps me pay the instructors for this week. And um, I'm thinking about doing this on a more regular basis. And thank you, everyone, for, yeah. For being here. Really appreciate you all. Thanks so much. And the replay is going to be available in just, uh, just a few minutes here. We'll do this again. Thanks for making this a great week of workshops, and I will see you soon. Uh, William, I have a super easy way of teaching key signatures that I'm aware of. Um, just send me an email, david at davidwallaman.com. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.